Hello, star people. If you've always wanted to learn a constellation, this is a great place to start. It's Scorpius, the scorpion. And see how it contains a pattern of stars reminiscent of a scorpion's curved tail? Scorpius is easy to find on July and August evenings. From the Northern Hemisphere, look southward each evening. From the Southern Hemisphere, look overhead. And if you have a dark sky, you can't miss the fact that Scorpius is located in the midst of the starry band of the summer Milky Way, the edgewise view into our own Milky Way galaxy. The pattern of the scorpion can help you focus on the Milky Way. And looking toward the Milky Way is always a wonderful thing to do. Here's our friend Bob King to tell you all about it. Without an exception, I think people that have been out under a dark sky when the Milky Way really starts climbing above you late at night, you stand underneath that thing and you know it's enormous. It's an entire galaxy that's every single star in the sky belongs to the Milky Way. And all the you know, extrasolar planets and nebulas and star clusters, it looks to your eye and in your heart as big as it truly is and it will really dwarf you to stand underneath it. It's one of the best experiences, one of the best cosmic connection type experiences you can have. It just whoosh, instantly refreshes your perspective about your place in the universe. It's our galaxy. It's our home in space and it refreshes your perspective to see it. So what about if you can't go to a dark place and see the Milky Way? Even so, the constellation Scorpius itself has many cool and easy to see features. And I'm gonna show you three features in Scorpius that you can pick out from a not so dark sky. So first, you'll wanna look for the bright red star called Antares. It's the brightest star in Scorpius, considered the heart of the Scorpion. It's about 550 light years away, and it's very easy to spot within the Scorpion pattern. And Antares has its own fascinating story. It's a red supergiant star. Approximately 700 of our suns could fit side by side in front of it. If Antares were placed in the center of our solar system, its outer surface would extend out to somewhere around the asteroid belt between the sun's fourth planet, Mars, and its fifth planet, Jupiter. And like all supergiant stars, Antares won't live long, astronomically speaking. It'll run out of fuel and collapse, causing a supernova explosion. It'll leave behind a tiny, compact neutron star, or possibly a black hole. But there's more. In a dark sky, with your eye alone, you can see M4, right next to Antares, it's a distant and ancient cluster of stars. Oops, let's see here. Let's try this one. There we go. <laughs> okay, see that? That is the red star Antares. And if you look closer with binoculars, you can see this cluster. It's one of more than 150 globular star clusters in our Milky Way galaxy. M4 is the closest globular cluster at only 550 light years away. Oh, our platform is acting up here, but we got it. There we go. Use your binoculars and you can see this cluster as a small, faint, diffuse ball of light, uh, but in a moderate-sized telescope, you can see it as a tight, symmetrical collection of stars. To me, it always looks like a dandelion about to lose its seeds, uh, and it contains some of our galaxy's oldest stars, but that's a story for another time. And meanwhile, one last thing. 
Look at the pattern of the scorpion again and notice the two stars at the end of the curved tail. These two stars are called Shaula and Lasaf, but stargazers mostly just call them the stinger, and they're so near each other that they're easy to pick out. In late June and early July, Scorpius reaches its peak in the sky at around 10 p.m., and all the stars return to the same place in the sky about a half an hour earlier with each passing week as Earth revolves around the sun. So by mid-July, you'll look for the Scorpion to be highest at around 9 p.m., and that's your local time, no matter where you are on Earth's globe. And then by late July, you'll want to look for Scorpius uh, at its highest around 8 p.m. And just a word about Greek mythology. The scorpion is famously linked to another easy to see constellation, Orion the Hunter. It's said that Orion grew arrogant. He claimed he could kill any creature. And to teach him a lesson, the Greek gods sent Scorpius to sting and kill him. And so today the scorpion and the hunter never appear in the sky at the same time. It's only when the scorpion has set for the night that Orion will rise. So we see Orion before dawn each year, beginning around early August. <laughs> Sorry about this, you guys. There we go. Oh, so Cheryl's going Milky Way hunting next week. Awesome. Um, okay, so another one more legend about Scorpius. In Hawaii, Scorpius was known as a powerful, uh, magical artifact known as Maui's fishhook, and it was featured in the Moana movies. And here's my review. My granddaughter and I saw both Moana 1 and 2, and we loved them. And you might not know that the sun spends less time in front of Scorpius than any other constellation of the zodiac. It shines in front of Scorpius for only a week uh, every year from November 22nd to 29th. And remember, we're talking about the constellation here, not the astrological sign of Scorpio. So here's what we know in astronomy land. <laughs> we know that the constellation Scorpius connects us to the Milky Way galaxy some of its stars, and it also connects us to stories about our ancestors. So look for the stars of Scorpius, the scorpion, and let them weave their stories for you. We're here live every weekday at the same time. And did you hear there's an enormous comet heading toward our sun? I'll be back on Monday to talk about it with an astronomer. One Earth, one sky, earth sky.